This vulnerability was part of the Ripple 20 grab bag discovered by JS of Tech Security Research. This vulnerability is really four vulnerabilities that got lumped into one in the same CV. This write-up concerns the vulnerability referred to as vulnerability number one. This vulnerability is a heap buffer overflow during the parsing of DNS response packets in the Trek TCP IP stack. The protocol stack is implemented as an embedded kernel firmware component. Trek TCP IP stack supports receiving DNS response packets over UDP. DNS supports me message compression by eliminating duplicated labels in the message. A label is a component of a domain name. DNS packets have a formatting for hostname string that breaks it into labels that are prefixed by a label length byte. Multiple labels are separated by a period. The total hostname string is considered complete when a zero is found for label length. The DNS spec states that the max label length should be 63 bytes and the hostname length should be 255 bytes. The track TCP IP stack is used in a lot of technology and known devices such as Dell, Aruba networks, audio codes, etc. The following is an example of a DNS header packet. And here I would like you to pay attention to this label length prefix strings. So for example, the integer five, which is currently this, denotes that the label contains five characters. So one, two, three, four, five, as we can see here, that corresponds to the word Slack. Another label length prefix, three, four, C -O -C -O -M. and then finally a zero signal in the end of the label. Example. So the number three, if we were to consider www.example.com, the first label dub, 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 would be prefixed by its length, which is three. And then the following level example would be prefixed by its length seven. And the, the slide would need to be updated. And eventually the label three, the label COM will be prefixed by its length three up until we discover the no label, which denotes the end of the host name. When it, with regards to compression, if we were to represent foo.example.com, then we only need to care about the label foo. And then we set a compression pointer, which basically indicates the offset from the beginning of the packet, where to find the rest of the label. So in this case, pointing back to example.com. The reason why the maximum size per label is 63 is because whenever you observe a label, a label length byte, it could either be a label length byte or a compression pointer. If it's a compression pointer, it would occupy two bytes. Otherwise it occupies one byte. But how do you know that the first byte you're observing is a label length and not a compression pointer? Well, if the upper two bits are one, one, that is if they are set, then you're observing a compression pointer. And that really leaves six bits left to represent the label length and hence why the calculation, the maximum length of a label is 63. Once again, we observe the, uh, how the compression takes place. So C00C identifies that this, the, that compression is in use. If we were to perform the calculation, then we would count zero C bytes from the start of the header. And then that gets us to slack.com. Of particular importance to this vulnerability is the ROD length variable. This member of the packet or this data is the length in octets of the ROD data field. So for example, 
ROD length here says four, and we can see that the ROD data contains four bytes. Take a moment to read and understand the code, and I try to identify the flaw. ROD length is currently attacker controlled. Pay attention to resource record after name pointer and the DNS header pointer. Label pointer should correspond to the beginning of the label and the label end pointer should be this calculation here. So on, 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 a, on a high level, understand that this code will try to determine the length of the host name. I allocate a buffer the size of the length of the host name.